So the next thing we're going to be talking about is uh, quantum numbers. What exactly are quantum numbers? So quantum numbers are how we define electrons um, in their orientations uh, within an atom. Okay? And there's four different quantum numbers, um, and we'll go through each one of those. So the first one is the principal uh, quantum number, um, and it's dependent on the size. And we define this as n. So you may see any type of them on the, on the MCAT. You may see them... Um, name it as principal quantum number, as n. They won't, they won't necessarily call it the size. They, they may say, what does this measure? And you say, oh, the size or the energy level. Um, so if we imagine this as our periodic table. Oh, so there's also this in the middle right there. Um, so let's just say this is our um, periodic table, something like that. Um, this n, if we had n right here, this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and on and on and on. So just um, every period will be a different n value. All right? And then the second one is something called angular quantum number, and it's dependent on the shape. Um, so we have four different um, orbitals, s, p, d, and f. And so this is really um, what the angular quantum number is defining. Um, so I guess the, the easiest way to do this is, is we have an equation um, n minus 1. So our angular quantum number can be anything n minus 1. So say our quantum number, um, our principal quantum number n equals 2, that means that the angular quantum number can be 1 or it can be 0. Or it can be one or the other. Um, and this is what it means by that. Um, so S has an angular quantum number of 0, P1, D2, and F3. Um, so all this is saying is that um, the possible angular quantum numbers within the second period, the second principal quantum number, are either S and P. And if we look at our periodic table, we can kind of see that. We can see that that's true because um, in our second period, we can have S orbitals, or we can also have P orbitals. We can't have D orbitals. There is no 2D. There is no 2F. And if we look at 4, that means N minus 1 would be 3. That means we can have all, we could have um, S, P, D, or F, right? And that should make sense. Okay. Um, so then the third quantum number, the magnetic quantum number, is based on orientation. Okay. And so the equation that they give us here is negative L and so I forgot to mention that angular quantum number is defined by L and the third quantum number is M and what this actually is telling us is that it's telling us the actual orbitals themselves so for example if we had a P orbital like this right we have three orbitals within the P orbital we have three actual groupings or, or boxes that we can put our electrons in, okay? Um, and so remember from before, if this is a p orbital, what would our angular quantum number be? Well, it'd be 1, right? Because remember from before right here? And so now we have to try to find what the magnetic quantum number is. Well, it can either be negative L, which is 1. So this was our L quantum number, our secondary quantum number. Okay, so it could be negative 1, it could also be 0 because that's within that range, and 1. And this would be our M. Okay? And so that means that we could have you know, these three different types within the P orbital. So, so pretty much what we did is we were able to define, you know, the first quantum number gave us the different energy levels um, through the, the PR table like that. And then the secondary quantum number um, define whether it's in the S block, the P block, um, the D block, or the F block, right? And then once we got further, now we have to define which orbital itself is in, which orbital that electron is in, right? And so to get even further is that within each of these um, orbitals, we can have electrons going up or we can have electrons going down. We can always have two electrons within one orbital, right? Um, so how do we distinguish this one from this one, right? Well, 
This is by the fourth quantum number. It will be the magnetic spin number. One will have a positive one half and one will be a minus one half. But the thing is, we don't know which one is positive one half. We don't know which one's negative one half. We just know that one is one half, one is negative one half. And this is called the magnetic spin number and it's denoted by ms. Okay? And so there are some rules for filling these electrons um, in these orbitals or in these uh, block diagrams. Um, and there's three of them. And so the first one is we want to fill the lowest energy level first. And we'll see which ones are the lowest and which ones are the highest energy levels that we'll deal with. Um, the next one is Hun's rule, which is we fill the, each of the orbitals singly before pairing. So like what I showed there, that's actually wrong. We can't actually do this. Um, that was just more for an example. But this is what I mean by that. So say we had uh, three electrons that we wanted to fill within the S or the P orbital, right? Um, you could either do this, or you could do this, okay? And this would be wrong, right? We have to fill everything singly before we pair it. So we fill all the um, singly, all the orbitals singly, and then if we had a fourth electron, then we could go back and pair one, but we don't go, um, you know, pair each one and just try to fill them in any order that we want. We have to have some systematic rule to them and that's what it is. Um, and so the Pauli exclusion principle um, is that they can't have the same spin. So like this would be correct, but say we had both of them as going up, so say they both were positive one half, that is not allowed. They have to be opposite in spin if we're going to pair them up like that. Okay? And so this will just show us the energy levels. And so a good thing to note is this. So the first thing I want to say is that um, let's just go over really quickly what um, each of these uh, S, P, D, and F block are. So this is, would be the S block right here. It can have a maximum of two electrons. The P block, which can have a maximum of six electrons. D block right here, transition metal, can have 10 electrons. And F block is 14. Um, so the way we do this is we say 1s, and if we wanted to do 2s, then 2p, those are the blocks, 3s, 3p, 4s, and then here's a, a tricky thing, 3d, notice how we didn't say 4d, this is 3d, um, and that's just, for some reason they, they wanted this d block to be 3 rather than 4, that's one thing you have to remember, and then 4p, 5s, and then on and on and on, and when we get back here, this is actually 4f, and then 5f. So that's one thing to remember, and we'll see how that relates right here. So let's see if we can fit this on here. So energy level, going from least to greatest, 1s, obviously very is going to be the lowest, 2s, next, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d. So now remember before, energy level, if it has the principal quantum number of 3 versus 4, um, you would think that, oh, 3 is always going to be less. You know, 3 has to be lower than um, a fourth um, with the principal quantum number. But that's not true for this because we have to just order them um, in the way we see it. 4s, 3d, um, and 4p, we would just order it how we see it on the, um, on the periodic table. That's why we see 4s is less than 3d, but 4p is greater than 3d. Um, but because if we just wrote it out, if we just wrote it out something very simply um, like 3d and 4s, and we didn't think about it, you know, you would, you would probably put this one before the 4s, but that's not the case. The 4s is actually lower, and we just base everything off the periodic table. What we see here, then you, do, then you uh, assign the energy levels. You don't base it strictly on, oh, S is less than P, is less than D, is less than F in energy, and 1 is less than 2, is less than 3, is less than 4. We can't say that. You actually have to go through the PR table um, and look at that for yourself and find out which one will have the, the lowest energy level. And now hey guys, remember to post any questions you would like us to answer in the next question of the day down below in the comments. Thanks for watching.